All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Mr. Cat action here on Moonduck TV. We are in game number two remaining. of a best of five Team Bazaar, the former WG Unity versus five Faceless. I'm remaining. Android, joined again by the lovely Trent. What's up, dude? I uh, just muted, then unmuted Radiant myself because I just naturally assumed I'd mute myself the whole time. Hopefully you were, were enjoying the sweet tunes of my Sumerian documentary. You know, it didn't come through the team speak. Damn, that's that's unfortunate. <laughs> I would have loved to enrich myself with that. Yes, well, you know, it's it's a, it's a tough life, I'm sure. But uh, we're back. <laughs> Dota two, bizarre, faceless, centaur, war runner, Five back in the action remaining. once again here. Same. Uh, bands coming out from Team Bazaar, a little bit different over here from Faces. They allow the Earth Spirit to slip on through to the first pick, so they'll snag it on up. They're taking it for themselves. They wanted this game. They allow the Centaur, the Rubik, and they take a Nyx Assassin for themselves. So plenty of teams used to ban this out up against them, much like the Timber and Magnus. We'll have to see what Ice 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 can uh, get done with it. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty deadly roaming combo. Once Nyx hits six, you got an Earth Spirit to set things up. That is... That's dangerous. Now, I expect a little Five bit of love or hate uh, in this ban phase for the Invoker, just because both teams have a player that plays Reserve him phenomenally. Time. We saw Jabs go 5-0 and oh before he even left the laning phase last game. Uh, Nana is one of his best heroes as well, so definitely a hero that, that both teams are eager to snap up for themselves. Team Bazaar do have first pick going into this next round, so the third pick will be theirs. Yeah, it's uh, another good benefit of the Nyx Assassin too, right? It makes it like far less tempting to head in towards those uh, ODs or Invokers or really anyone when uh, when you have a Nyx Assassin on your team. It's difficult to like throw down all your combinations. Um, obviously, you're an int hero, so the mana burn's pretty tough on you. It just like you can still go for those heroes, um, but it's not fun, right? Like you can't just be this free throwing uh, <laughs> Invoker whenever uh, Nyx Assassin is going to be nearby and alive. Definitely. Yeah, um, we still have the lone druid in the pool, which I think Ooh. is important to mention. I, I would guess he'll come out in the second phase if he's not banned here. Yeah, he's one of those, you know, remaining. ever since the changes to his bear, ever since talent trees, really, he has just been Five on top of the world. Remaining. He gets so strong, uh, and he can he can slot himself up pretty effectively. Similar uh, to the morphling, where if he just gets a Dying lane where he can free farm back. and not be bothered by anyone for a little bit, suddenly that is a big problem for the other team. I wonder if uh, Faceless will leave the Lone Druid. That'll be interesting, I think. Because uh, we know they play it pretty well. And they'll remaining. just hand it off to Black. More than likely, go to the safe lane with it. Uh, but are they willing to allow it to fall into the hands of Team Bazaar if they do? Um, Reserve time. I think uh, Centaur plus Lone Druid is pretty damn strong. I would probably want to ban it if I was Faceless. I, I've seen that combination work very well, but we'll have to see if they have any sort of solutions themselves. Maybe like a Disruptor or something, someone who could just get that glimpse going. No, they're going to come back to that certain spot and start setting up your AoE stuns from there. Um, Faceless have some options like Shadow Demon still, who could uh, set up nicely in lane for Earth Spirit rotations to come in. He can also help the Nyx Assassin when he rotates in around like level 6 and stuff. And uh, Team Bazaar just forced to ban out two of the... Those are like two mid-heroes that Nyx counters very well right now in the current patch. So it's like, well, we can't pick them, so we don't want you to have them. Yeah, I mean, also some of Nana's favorites, it's got to hurt that he has to let them go. But like you mentioned, the Nyx would just obliterate them if Bazaar picked them. And Faceless, they could definitely still get away with another Jabs remaining. Invoker. And that, that would hurt a lot. <laughs> so... Both heroes taken out. Now Reserve another time. ban coming in from Faceless, and then it's time for Team Bazaar to snap up their third. Hmm. What other uh, what other heroes has Bazaar been running really effectively? Life I mean, this Stealer? is basically just the do we ban Lone Druid or not ban? That would be my guess. Die so they're not banning it. They go ban they're saying the Omni. No. Yeah. I think Omni enables a lot of their picks. Like um, you could even still think about Omni plus an obnoxious hero um, to fight into Nyx. So, like, Omni OD, potentially. Probably not, but, you know, those kind of ideas. Um, the Omni Storm Spirit, another option, those kind of things. And uh, just generally a hero that would help remaining. negate a lot of what Earth Spirit and Nyx Assassin bring to the table. So, I and appreciate an Omni that. Omni Centaur would have been a great combo. You just got Stampede, yep. and then suddenly everyone just gets walked on with DJ Aura. Oof. Yeah, it would look a lot like that uh, Pudge. Omni <laughs> dual offlane they did. Just suddenly everyone on Faceless is walking in molasses. 
All right, Team Bazaar taking their time with this one. They don't want to give away too much to Faceless because Faceless are just so good at, at drafting in such a punishing way. And they're going to go for the LD. Pretty yeah. standard pick there. Wouldn't be too surprised with it. No, I'm sure Faceless knew that was coming if we knew it was coming. So uh, they allowed in <laughs> and we have to find out what they want to do. Um, how do you handle the Centaur seconds, Lone Druid? Remaining. It seems so strong. And uh, we still have Team Bazaar. They have the option. Uh, well, I guess, Five man, this Nyx is actually really remaining. smart. Because Team Bazaar have been doing that support Bat Rider too. Which um, I think Nyx says, and obviously Bizarre. he counters Bat Rider pretty hard. I think you could still go support Bat, honestly, into Nyx. Simply because it's a support hero and you just don't Firefly before the grab. Dire team. Uh, but we'll have to see if Bazaar are feeling it here once again. I'm so um, scared. There's still this ogre. Warlock, Nyx, Earth Spirit, Faceless are going to have so much control in these team fights. My goodness. Ten seconds remaining. Get the final pick too. Yeah, they do have a lot of control and a lot of AOE damage too. Five uh, just between remaining. the Earth Spirit and the Warlock, so you get magnetized with the chains going, and it's just like doubly effective, essentially. Reserve time. We do have uh, Ex Nova's Rubik, adults. so maybe looking forward to some more Golem steals. We got a we got a chance to see one last game, but unfortunately, it was on the back of uh, Faceless just mopping the floor with WG already at their tier threes at twenty minutes in. Not an easy time. No, not particularly. Uh, still like the ogre here. I think it's probably the best position four left. What? Oh, a phoenix. Okay, so it's like a combo Radiant breaker, team right? Pick. Where they're they're coming in with all these big plays, where they're gonna try um, this golem alt into magnetize and everything, <laughs> and then you just have this ag on the side. Yeah, like that's that's a neat strategy, but. I, I it's, think it's good. You're also not susceptible to um, Carapace in your ultimate, right? It doesn't affect it at all. I've seen yeah. a lot of teams used Five to run Centaur Phoenix because it's very good to cause people to group up on the egg. And it gives you an easy way uh, to go for the Stampede or rather the uh, Stomp. It's like numerous heroes. All right. Someone else was running Phoenix Lone Druid. I mean, maybe it was just OG. That's the easiest person to say in my head. But I remember watching this combo before and saying, oh, okay, these two heroes together actually make quite a bit of sense. Yeah, I'm just used to seeing you know, Phoenix just get no love in... Uh competitive dota but all right bizarre i i can see this working for them but faceless they go dota for an alchemist and so they're like all right screw you if you want to mess around and try to group up i'm just gonna farm that's pretty cool so he um the default hero against phoenix is jug also still a very strong hero you can just spin off and still attack the egg so no one can really target you and the egg goes down uh, but Juggernaut into Lone Druid is a little bit scary, seconds, just because obviously you can get rooted during spins, you don't scale uh, as fast or really as well as the Lone Druid does, and uh, you're fighting melee into like the Centaur Warrunner and everything, so you, you go for this Alchemist instead, who also still has a very high attack speed, so he can handle the egg, but he uh, scales along with that Lone Druid, can take him to later stages of the game more comfortably, and you don't really have to worry about what their last pick mid is, because you can just always send your Alk there and be relatively fine. Ten seconds remaining. Good stuff. Yeah, you don't really want to be like OD in the Phoenix and stuff like Five that either. Because he's like similar idea where he could have been this hero that uh, can go mid no matter what Bazaar want to take. But then you don't really have any way to get rid of the fire spirits or anything like that. So strong stuff. And then a, a typical ban there in the Slark too. Something we've seen Black opting in for and someone who can purge off fire spirits. Weaver is still in the pool here for Radiant last picks. Team Both teams pick. need to snap up a little bit more damage for themselves. Uh, I think it's... It's, it's all right for both teams. It's one of those heroes that's verily have very heavily prized in uh, SCA Dota, usually taken out in the first or second round of bans. Yeah, he's great up against uh, Lone Druid, especially probably most likely to be on Faceless. I think Pizarre, I, I don't know if they run the Lone Druid mid. From what I understand, they they've always done it safely, but there's uh, there's always time to try something new, and not always either. I mean, that's just what I've seen in Mr. Cat. So um, we'll have to see exactly where they want to send him but uh no i could be down with the weaver on faceless they have okay control he does more minus armor with the alchemist uh the only thing he will be missing would be a little bit more aoe which would be kind of nice to combo up again with these like chains and nicks and everything like a uh, there's more minus armor on bizarre i'd almost say a sven mm. but uh you won't get any war pipe what is and... are we in elimination mode right now team <laughs> Because <laughs> that's what it feels like with a Phoenix and a Gyro being picked up. I mean, I can see the synergies on their teams, and you look at it, you know, through a, through a broader lens, and it makes sense. But my goodness, these are some some rare picks. 
Yeah, it's uh, just that AOE though, right? Like it's Ten so good with chains and Earth Spirit and this next set. Like they just oh. have this crazy amount of AOE damage. If you get a get warlock, going. like four man fatal bonds. If you get a couple right. people stuck in the rock, that all of a sudden, hey, it's call down and everyone is dead. Yeah, and Sven has some serious issues against a lot of those heroes. So um, I think if they didn't want AOE, they probably wouldn't have went for their Ten classic seconds. Wraith King as well, which would have been kind of fun. Um, it's like the Lone Druid and stuff. Okay. But... They're mid. All right. So Tinker and Lone Druid, great combination. You can BP onto the Spirit Bear, be generally obnoxious in these fights. Um, same idea that like kind of phases had last game, where you had these blink stomps into stun strikes. Now it's going to be like blink stomps into a TPing into the bear uh, Tinker, and you're just going to try and zap people down, burst one person right out of the fight immediately. And uh, ideally, that's likely going to be the Warlock or the Earth Spirit that you <laughs> want to find. But now he is Tinker into Nyx, which is a little bit worrisome, right, when he's trying to hop around the map. Um, but they don't have the best vision to find him in trees, so they can get the carapace off, but then you have to track him down after that. All right, so Faceless definitely going for you know nice gank oriented lineup, great team fight. Whereas Bazaar, I mean, seconds, they can definitely ten. team fight and they're going to want to with their Phoenix Egg, but you've got a lone druid and a tinker Five who have remaining. an ability to very easily just screw off into the, each other lane. One goes top, one goes bottom. They've got great split push, so. We'll see if they're just going to be leading Faceless on a wild goose chase, or if it's going to be uh, another easy Faceless stomp. I mean, game number one, I don't think we really got to taste the full impact of Bazaar's draft. Hopefully game number two, we're going to see what they got. Gyro, love them GG branches. Yeah, this is like last game too, black and the same items. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I like his style, man. You just get that wand, you get the one tango or one branch to eat. It's great. I'm looking forward to this uh, gyro doing well, though. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah. Black uh, pump out this magic damage. Do we see Ags? Do we see, like, an Alchemist Ags synth coming to him or something? Oh, actually, that's a good question in terms of the Ags build. I don't know. I've seen more people talking about it. They seem to like the Aghanims. It's like a permanent DD rune in a way that you like, can't control it and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think with this combination, someone needs to be buying a Veil on this team. That, that seems pretty sick. So um, probably going to be XY. I would guess. Uh, Damn, look at unless that lone he's druid really... set. That is badass. Got an eye patch. Oh yeah. Solid. Yeah, I'd actually really like to see uh, Alchemist be able to just buy up a couple items for himself and then start synthing ags all over the place. Because Nyx, Earth Spirit, Warlock, and Gyrocopter are gonna be just really taken to the next level. Alchemist is dancing. Is the bear gonna get it? All right. Is it just me? Is that bear absolutely tiny? It's it's a uh, petite. Oh yeah, that's definitely not just me. That thing is so yeah, puny. That, that's why hilarious. Why is it so? Is that a bug or is it just the weird cosmetic? Because it looks real small. Yeah, maybe it's like a cosmetic that levels up or something like that. <laughs> Suddenly, we're just gonna see like a massive monster heaving its way across the map at level like 18. All right, here we go. Roll in. Already getting things heated up. Onto Nana, making this Tinker's life a little bit difficult, but Tinker should have some fun in the mid lane. Until Alchemist really levels up that acid spray, there's no reason why Nana can't outlast hit him. Get a couple of nice little lasers off on his face. Yeah, there's one thing we've seen from SCA, right? It's that prized tinker pick. Uh, often banned out in the final stages. We'll make his way through here, so try and get that heavy aggression going. Uh, teeping around the map, joining in for kills. Much more about that than like Naga Siren style lane control. Top lane, they're trying to get an early kill here on the Ice Ice Ice. Yeah, I mean, they're trying, but it's a little bit difficult. I think we gave Phoenix a little bit of flack in the draft, at least at least I did. I have my doubts, but I think Xnova can definitely prove himself here now. Interesting that Xnova's not playing as Rubik. Afu gonna be taking that instead. I think every time I've seen uh, Team Bazaar or WG Unity run it, Xnova's been on the Rubik. Yeah, Phoenix is definitely one of those more niche heroes, so you yeah. can understand it. Uh, you either play a good Phoenix way. or you just don't. Boulder Whiff coming in from XY. Trying to keep the harass onto Ben. Nuts, taking a bit of damage, but we'll have his heal up pretty soon. Yeah, Ben's been doing great down here. Three heroes, still in lane, getting experience. Only one last hit, but at least he's hanging around for now. He's got his boots, but um, non-stop harass coming up from Nuts. Like, this was one of the great things about their uh, Warlock uh, Omni Knight. Like, they picked an Omni into the Warlock yesterday, and every time he would just throw the uh, Shadow Word, he would just give himself the repel. Pretty good call, but... 
For now, he'll rotate on in. Actually, finds himself the two-minute bounty round with two supports bought up. That is brutal. That <laughs> There's no way that happens. That, that should not be happening. The supports just got to be yeah, a little more fired. cognizant about, hey, that centaur that was in lane, uh, he's yeah, not here anymore. Out. Did uh, got, Afu like, got it too. Oh, up top, Dire. They're just, they're just making it happen. They steal both bounty runes from the Radiant side. And they're going to get the illusion too. It looks like it. Roll in, gonna clip onto the Rubik, but he's got a telekinesis fade bolt if he needs it. They just got all four bounty runes. That's actually hilarious. That's <laughs> so much money. <laughs> I don't early think I've on. ever seen that at two minutes. I mean, and Rubik got it too, uh, up in the top lane. That means just a lot of gold coming to these supports early on. Well, X Nova just solos down the Nyx Assassin. Things are going really well for Bazaar so far in their lanes. And of course, Alchemist is gonna have a bit of a tricky time farming because Tinker can just keep lasering him. He's blind, he can't last it, relying pretty heavily on his acid spray just to zone back the Tinker. Yeah, he'll just keep doing this too. He just pulled the wave and then Tinker has to go back for it. Like, even that kind of a laser doesn't actually do anything. You get like one denied, then he comes back, just gets that, so. <laughs> Gives him the taunt. Got that was a worthy taunt, actually. All right, He's here like, we go. Yeah, Nyx Assassin bro. could be in some trouble. Roll in from XY, gonna zone everyone back, X Nova. Didn't get that Icarus dive you really needed. Are you watching this bear run? I'm not watching it. What is wrong with this bear? <laughs> what oh, is why that? Why does it leapfrog everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> All right. I don't know what's going on. Oh my. It's like bounding. <laughs> it's like the happiest bear ever. <laughs> I'm going to miss first play because I'm laughing too hard. Fuck you, Trent. I mean, don't blame me. <laughs> blame whoever made that bear. Oh my. I mean, I'm not even mad about it, I guess. I'm just, it's more like I'm impressed. It's like in the game. It's like they snuck it past. What is this thing doing? Oh, it's just hopping. It's so high. It's like buttons so high in the air. I'm sorry for the camera work, but it's the funniest thing I've seen in Dota in a really long time. It's all right. Nothing's really happening anyway, right? I mean, Ben, there's... The level starts stacking up on the sports, especially the Warlock. It gets really obnoxious to be in lane. You're just going to get more gold being in the jungle and doing this stuff instead. Um, mid lane, Jabs is doing exactly what you'd expect. I mean, this is Radiant side, right? Uh, it's generally fine, I think, to have the first pick on Radiant side because you you have a mid that has a better jungle to fall back into. So you just grab someone like Ember or Alchemist, and uh, it's difficult for them to deny you out. So uh, now they get the experience to X, Y in the mid lane. Things going pretty well for Faceless so far. And bottom lane, Ben just TPs out. Yeah, nothing there to stun him up. Warlock, certainly no golems dropped just yet. His levels are pretty good for a support that's been splitting the experience. Quite thin, almost level four on him. Down here, Afu drops a really nice ward. Gonna get some vision of Alchemist trying to take out the neutrals. Doesn't fade Bolt to try to steal that. I've seen Afu get in there and <laughs> some steal up some neutrals from our starving offlaners before. Black goes in. Is this going to be enough there? Rocket Barrage. Oh, one hit would have done it. Do they have anything that can catch up to him? Gyro has to leave him. Oh, oh no. Damn. Painful. Um, definitely a hero that you're trying to get those early kills in lane with on Gyro. He has so much early magic damage. If anyone's there, you just want to be there to punish it. X Nova will come down just to even soak a little bit. Um, only going to find a catapult though because there is a pull. So he's going to be very disappointed that he made this rotation, I would think. And uh, might even get a little bit too aggressive because of it, trying to find that experience. Ah, there we go. He'll grab it now. Mm, only finds two of them, though. Pretty calm game so far. Almost six minutes in. No first blood. Everyone just trying to get up their own items before this turns into a, a vicious five-on-five -five bloodbath, because you know it's going to. Faceless like to rotate. There's a Nyx assassin. Team fight for days on the Radiant side. I think Bazaar just enjoying the calm before the storm. Oh, Black. He's mixing it up. Ah. Why is right there? All right, so this is kind of interesting. I noticed last game that uh, Black, I, I started like looking back to his matches when our game's over, and he, he likes to go for the brown boots right into the helm a lot of the time, just like skipping over the Ring of Aquila, whereas a lot of people, uh, and it's not even like a hero dependent thing. I don't know. He was just way more on point with that one. So he started with the headdress again this game, but now he has gone back for the ring. So uh, just wants that probably more than likely the mana regen being the most important part is this uh, gyro because he's level six now and wants to be able to just keep like spamming and spamming and going to the jungle using your flat cannon because 
it's about that time now where he, because he has his headdress, he can just use that regen to go jungle and give the space to nuts here in the bottom lane. Get six going here and it's, uh, trying to find it. Oh, <laughs> I thought he was going for a courier snipe, but X Nova is just doing some diving wards. That's pretty good. Yeah, the courier was right there coincidentally. Maybe he got eyes on it a little bit too late and just couldn't finish it off. But either way, things still very calm. I like that the mid laners are now just the, the Rubik and the Earth Spirit. So supports soaking up that experience, a little bit solo farm. Now here we go, Chase potentially onto Nuts. X Nova's got the Icarus dive in five seconds, goes in with the Spirits. Trying to keep him all slow. There's the lift back. It looks like this could be first blood. They leave him into a stomp, and that's going to be it. Ah, Fu grabs it up, but the roll back in, call down, clips onto the centaur. He's in some trouble here, doesn't have a stampede, and he's going to fall in return. Black snapping that one up for himself, so some nice golds going to our gyrocopter. Uh, still going to come out on top, though, of course. That first blood, so good stuff for Bazaar. Goes on to the Rubik of all people. Not shabby. Looking at Blacks, goes right back to farming though, and Centaur dying, slowing him down a little bit. Ben, not even to five and a half yet at eight minutes, so a little bit slow. Dude, the bear got bigger. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a, a leveling up thing, so good to know. Bill just hopping around doing his thing. <laughs> that is, oh, he's stacking. Hey, he's not hopping anymore. He's got a, a nice walk for himself. All right, we're, we're done with the giggles on that then. No, this bear is like hacks though. It turns like bright yellow when it can attack people. Got it. I like it. I like that bear cosmetic. I think I got the red panda for mine. No. Is this a pay to win bear? It's, I, I, I mean, I didn't know the bear turned like there's no way the other bears turned what that gray. What is this? Like look at this bear. Animation. Look how gray it is now. My god. Oh, he's crawling. All right. Back to actual Dota. Hey, this bear is actually important. We're, we're finding pay to win stuff here, Annie. It's, it's just that, clearly this cosmetic's pay to win. If you guys want to get it, it's uh, its name is oh, it won't let me bring up the thing anymore. So never mind, we we lost. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, oh no, it, it will. This is important, okay? This is the spirit of the dark wood. You guys are welcome. We're procasters. Uh, hey, I'm just helping out. Uh, that that's important. I'm down with pointing that out. Ben is six now, so we have the threat of the Stampede. They're going to use it on the nuts. Oh, oh, here we go. Roll up in. They get the kick. They get the stun. The call down finishes off our buddy Lone Druid. Nana able to take out nuts, like you mentioned, but return kills happening all across the map. One for one trade. I think Lone Druid was the bigger pick there. Top lane, though. To find our, our Tinker as well. They get the Impale. They get the stun. The Sunray trying to keep him alive, but it's not going to be enough. Now, Afu be able to lift up XY, but this Rubik running for his life. They've got the impale back up in four seconds, and there's not really much Rubik can do about it. Nick's gonna back off as we've got a little bit of a skirmish coming out. Black able to finish off the Phoenix with the Rocket Barrage, so Faceless suddenly getting very active on the map, really applying pressure to the top lane. Yep, classic gyrocopter stuff, right? Rotating as early as possible, going for kills. That, uh, that whole play actually could have turned out so well for Bizarre Gaming if the timing was just a little bit different, right? Where you're using that stampede to both initiate as well as uh, retreat with your lone druid, but not quite able to save him up top there. And then that follows uh, through with the kills onto the Tinker and the Phoenix. So a big grabs for Faceless now. And the whole time, where's Alchemist? He's farming. Jab's getting it done in the jungle. He's got his armlet on his way to the Radiance. And uh, Nana just has to try getting towards that Blink Dagger and... Oh, top, yeah. Ajit. Nice Savage Roar. Oh, is this going to be enough to save him here? Roll comes in, but oh, goal, dude. That guy got the kick. Yeah, it was pretty nice. Down bottom, Ben. Going to be going in. They got that stampede into the hoof stomp. The laser <laughs> does it as well as the like, double edge there. So very nice rotation. Tinker just getting the most out of those little bots. And Rubik is in some serious trouble. Going to be dodging out spells left and right. XY can't find him in the boulder. Oh, like this is a, a dangerous TP. Yeah, Tinker, he's he's bold here. Gonna be missing the impale. The March of the Machine's doing some work. This boulder misses. And oh, the heal. He's healing him up. The negative urn won't be enough to take him out. He's still walking. He wants to go back in. He's got a laser. Player. And he's gonna get the kill onto XY. That, that is great. style points if I've ever seen him. Oh, he's got like the Pink Floyd light show going on. It's like <laughs> bouncing in the in the club behind him with the light, the ray coming through, and he just comes back in for the laser. That was oh, sick. That was so good. Uh, props to X Nova, just trying to keep track of him as he's just ambling back into that fight. 
Man, dangerous playing too. Like coming that close to a gyrocopter like that, rather terrifying. He had the backup with his vision though to keep him perfectly paced, and then the TP coming in from Ben. But that's huge, and a lot of that coming because they did kill nuts down bottom, right? He couldn't just immediately TP top and rotate, and it wasn't there to drop the rocks on top. Pull back onto the Nyx. He lands an impale, clips onto the centaur, and now he's invisible, and they're lacking vision. They know it. Oh, look at that roll. This Rufik is going to eat it. The Magnetize doing a lot of work. Phoenix is into the egg, and now XY has to bail. Here is going to be the Golems drop. It's doing some serious work to Bazaar. They're melting down. The egg hatches, but is it going to be enough to turn this fight up? Black is getting low from the Icarus dive. Tinker trying to go back in. Heat seeking missiles doing their magic. Stampede comes forward. Nuts. He's so low. And there will be a killing spree out for Nana as he's able to find a piece of prey there. Kill onto the Gyrocopter. Definitely slowing him down. There's that combo breaker though, you know, with this Phoenix. Like they start throwing everything in and then you're just agging here. And you know they can't deal with you or kill you and they can't just full five man on into the rest of Desire. And they were dropping low, uh, as you said. So close to being a full cleanup there for Faceless and instead it, it turns back around to a kill onto the Gyro. Yeah, with a long range missile there. Yeah, that was a really nice chaotic offering, but unfortunately, like you mentioned, the egg, they just couldn't get close enough to follow up with heroes. Now Ajit, uh, looks like he's just heading into his Dragonlance, so standard stuff, nothing too crazy, he has to finish stuff now. And look at that gap between the, uh, the Tinker, the Alk, and everyone else. <laughs> I mean, those guys, they got farm for days. Tinker can just hop to every witch lane, farming up, you know, three waves at once if he wants to. Uh, and Alka's got that four points in Grievel's Greed, and he's very close to his relic right now. Or his, uh, full radiance, he's already got the relic. That stacks right now. Top lane, Ice Ice goes in. They do have that sentry, but uh, eh, almost into it. They're staying near the, uh, away from the typical area. It looks nice done. Oh, they're dumping everything for this Rubik. Phoenix tries to heal. Spike Carap is going to be doing some work. X Nova will get out alive, and now Nana wants to be moving forward for this. Ajit ready to go in, has the Savage Roar. Can't get a root, though. Taking a and be a quick pause from Nets. Yeah. A little discord on the voice comm. So let's talk about the pace of the game right now. I mean, we talked about the net worth alchemist obviously rising ahead because that's what he does. But uh, overall, Faceless's net worth is looking really good. You got to keep pace with the Tinker, but the Gyro is getting the kills he needs to. Overall, XP pretty close for 14 minutes. Yeah, I think uh, considering there's only a 2k lead on Faceless, you're pretty happy with that, I would say, if you're bizarre, just because they are a uh, Alchemist squad, so you're keeping pretty good pace with them right now. Alk, in fact, is that big difference, so everything else even around um, the board, so nothing too scary for them, and now they will have the Radiance, though, so this is where we'll probably see Jabs actually join into a couple fights here, especially once he's his bots up. Black, also almost level 12, this will be a big level for him. And the second one into call down. Yeah, he's been using that call down really frequently. I see a lot of gyrocopters just kind of sit back and wait for big team fights to pop that out. But he's got no problem throwing it on solo kills. So far, it's paid off. Yeah, it's not too bad. It'll just um, gives him a total of uh, another 125 damage on the ulti. Uh, all in the AOE, all comboed up with chains and everything. So. All right. Did we learn our lesson? Do we have detection for the next? We got a dust. A carapace doing its work here, stunning up everyone. March the Machines rocking through. They burn him down with the Icarus dive, and there we go. That'll be another kill going the way of Nana. That was five and one. Meanwhile in the top lane, a little Magnetize going in. Another Golem drop for this lone Druid. Can he escape here? Really hoping for a nice Root Rock on this bear. It's getting so low, and he will end up going down. Can they turn this around? Nana going to be able to find at least something there, taking out the Warlock. The Magnetize still going through. There's another call down. Can the Dire get away? Centaur is taunting as Ben finds the kill onto the Earth Spirit. Yeah, that was nice. Afu comes in with a stolen vendetta. Helps secure the escape of his tinker there. But, uh, worthy grab for a uh, lone druid. That was not, not brave by Afu. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that. He put his arcane boots on the ground to use his magic stick while the golem was, like, touching him. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Gotta get those efficiency plays going. Yeah, I guess backpack could is back. for squares. Yeah, that's that's the spirit. I mean, don't don't want to get slowed down, get punched <laughs> by that thing. Where's, all right, then he just walks home anyway. So, you know what? Whatever, man. Dude, that's that's <laughs> efficiency. 
Ice is ice uh, on the struggle bus this game. Uh, yeah. Not having the easiest time. Not into his blink there quite yet. Hasn't really found those vendetta openings that you hope for. Just a couple onto like random supports, but then every time they get punished. He's under a sentry now, but there's no vision. Now they see him for a split moment. They did catch him. I know he's around. Rubik has dust. the dust, but it's all about that gut feeling. He, he wants him to pop first so he can use the vendetta damage on the Nyx to help secure the kill. Look at him. They're, they're just vendettaing past each other. Meanwhile, under the tower, we could have something going down. Roll deep there in, but the blink away from the Tinker means XY is just chilling there in the trees. Gonna get burned down by an Icarus dive. He's tossing stones left and right, but it's not gonna save your life. So the rest of Faceless, they gotta back off. It's bizarre. They're looking really solid right now, holding onto a kill lead and... Like you mentioned, with a free farming alchemist, this net worth lead is not that significant. Yeah, there is definitely some aspect of space creation happening here from Faceless, though. In terms of just like, they can always hold this tower for so long because of their gyrocopter. And uh, there could just be that one big fight where they just dump all this damage on top of you uh, with the chains. Even without the golem, it's not necessarily being this, um, required here. Radiant really trying to defend this, but they don't have Chaotic Offering up for another 20 seconds, and slow but steady chip damage coming out from these heroes. May just be enough to whittle down the tower. Actually going to be a little bit careful, though. Yeah. Right, caught out here. He's got a sentry to back him up. And I, I still be aware of it now. Hanks away for a moment. Got it. But even jabs can't get that much done here, too, which is, I'm sure, a little bit frustrating. Uh, he does have a haste rune. There we go. Boulder kick connects. They got the impale. Is this enough to actually secure the kill on the lone druid? The centaur comes in. He's got the stampede rolling. Gets to the shrine. This is going to be enough to save Ajit's life. Now, he's turning this around. They want to punish the Radiant for this aggressive play. They get the Nyx Assassin. They'll lift up the Earth Spirit soon to fall as well. Can they go for any more here? The Radiant's still trying to go in. They've got the Chaotic Offering Ooh, now, but Warlock loses his life. Nana is going to take a stun, but outside the call down, so there's no more damage coming in from the Radiant. Radiant's Faceless, they wanted to go in for a quick pick on the LD, but it ended up costing them three of their heroes. That was the big fight they wanted to win, too. Like, Alchemist found a haste room bottom, goes up here, grabs the bounty, and then immediately TPs up. He finds the Phoenix and gets the kill on her, uh, but then he was coming right in with that gyro and that Warlock, and if it wasn't for Nana picking off that golem, that could have been, like, three heroes caught inside. And then, you know, Gyro throwing out his skills, and it suddenly, like, turns into a massacre with all this burn damage coming through with the Radiance, so... Oh, they got a dust. Looks like Vendetta. Gonna be revealed, but Nick's still playing this one very safe. Tower goes in, they managed to blink forward, no, not, get the not Nuts is thinking about it. He's got a Chaotic Offering. Those three were very clumpy, but they're lacking a little bit of damage now. And speaking of damage, we got our Alk, who's just been doing Alk things the entire game. Jabs, we have not seen him have a whole lot of participation. He got a kill for himself, and since then he's just been grinding out the jungle, going in, almost has that full Manta style. Just waiting for about a thousand more gold for that ultimate orb, and, well, Radiance Boots of Travel's armlet. He is no slacker. The problem is, can he actually stand up to all five heroes on Bazaar? Yeah, he's, he's in a good spot for sure. I think um, once the Manta's out here, we'll see him uh, again come into the next fight. And uh, that's going to really ruin Ex Nova's life. Makes it very difficult for him. Uh, it makes it hard for Ajit to guarantee he's going to be getting his damage off here. And it's going to be that way for quite a while, too. Uh, very frustrating hero to uh, have Radiance against you when you're playing Lone Druid. Trying up here, send the bear home. But uh, maybe a smoke gank, perhaps, from the Dire relatively soon. They haven't actually forced into the uh, bottom or mid tower yet, though. So I guess not really too much of a need for smokes Dyer's yet. It would be a little bit too obvious, so... Can just group up and go with the bear push. Yeah, I mean, right now there's no reason for Bazaar to split up. Their only real vulnerability is you know, taking a five man chaotic offering, but. Right Good invis mid, but Nana knows. Oh, we cancels. We're about going in. There's going to be a TP rotation coming in from the Centaur. There's a silence. There's a stun. This Tinker's in a lot of trouble. He's worth so much money, but he just can't get out. The call down, gonna polish him off, and Jabs gets credit for the kill, so Alchemist raking in so much gold. The egg, a nice zoning tool, but it's not gonna be enough to save the heroes. Ex Nova has to just book it out of here using Dude, that Icarus I do not dive. Like and this buyback. Meanwhile, what there is, is gonna this? be a little bit of a fight in the trees. Nana Why? goes down. What? No. That was a dieback from Nana, the Tinker, feeding two deaths within 15 seconds. Now, Phoenix could be in some trouble as well. The impale's not going to be there, but Jabs, with a deep stun, has no problem diving tier threes. 
Faceless suddenly fighting with their alchemist, able to take a very convincing team fight. That was a little wild. Uh, what did the Tinker think I don't was going to happen? Oh no, oh they're going to get the Centaur as well, he's got the stun channeled up. Alk going to manta off the, well, attempt to manta off the stun. <laughs> A little bit late there, but at least get some illusions whacking away at the tower, making some progress while he's sitting there. When you pause and say lag, that's, that was the play right there. Oh yeah, no, that's clearly lag. Didn't quite have the 9k execution there for the jabs. Yeah, we saw we saw a nice nice dodge from uh, was it Arteezy yesterday? My goodness! All right, Rubik with the stolen stun. Does he get it off though? Oh no! He's just helping out <laughs> Faceless. He... <laughs> oh my! Alk is having some fun with his unstable concoctions. I don't think I've seen that many stuns <laughs> used in like a 30 second window. Ah, oh, that's pretty funny. But the real dream though would have been if he uh, got off the camera at the same time from Ice Ice Ice. Oh. And did like the reflected self stun damage. That would have been. Would have fully killed Immediately Rubik. nuked them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, so this game just got cracked wide open. Yeah, look at that uptick there on the net worth. It was like, all right, you know, Alk is farming, Alk's holding on, but it's relatively even, and then all of a sudden, like, whoops, racks. Dyer's top tower is under attack. That's crazy. Like, he was so close to the tanker for so long, and then that's it. Just boom. I mean, it looked so good for Bizarre because we saw them walking around winning fights, but you just can't let an alchemist do alchemist things for that long. He wasn't punished, there was no smoke ganks to try to find specifically the alchemist. Bazaar got really comfortable going and yeah, they could land a bunch of kills onto the warlock and the gyrocopter and the earth spirit, but that's not what the big problem is here. This is a four-slotted elk now at 23 minutes. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, that's what, it, what I was saying top, like where they held that tower for so long and just like there is some aspect of space creation happening, because there was, I mean, they were putting all these heroes top and Tinker's free farming and Alk's free farming but the problem is that whole, the whole game now boils down to essentially it was Jabs versus Nana and how these two heroes were going to perform and how these two players were going to do and like what fights they joined and whatnot. and Bizarre had, had won like every single one so far and and then that just happens like yes he got picked off once under the tower and it, it was an invis rune that's really unlucky but you, you can't buy back in that situation when the whole game just relies on you so heavily yeah, definitely uh, unless there's like a crazy good chance you're gonna turn it around. Yeah, I think I think Bazaar were still really trying to ride the momentum they had and maybe turn that around because of course we we've seen the Tinker can go back into these fights at extremely low health and still be impactful. This time he just got separated from the herd. I mean, we saw like four or five heroes just sandwiching him in this little crevasse. He wasn't able to do anything. Oh, now they just start doing their the flowchart stuff, right? Get Roche, secure towers, kill shrines. Already blew up your mid racks, so not exactly an issue here. Right, Alk now with a full Octarine core, because he got a chance to do Alk things and picked up some really nice juicy bounties in the last fight he took. So, uh, yeah, net worth now a little bit out of control, almost double the Tinker, where they were nearly even a moment ago. Now, dust sprayed out. They've got vision of what's going in, so no one's going to be too sneaky. Alk stuns himself. They still can't find the initiation. Afu ah, just burning from the magnetized Nana, this time staying very far in the back lines. EKB popped by Black. Really want to make sure he lives through this. The Radiance Illusions, are they going to get Afu ah, the stun to come in? And Phoenix is able to keep the Rubik alive, but that was... I mean, that took a lot of resources just to make sure the little guy can waddle out. Hey, they'll take it though. Another 300 gold, trying to build something back up on the Nana here. Uh, 1200 gold swing, or rather experience swing overall. A little bit of gold uh, heading their way too, so... And Nana's on the road to recovery. Of course, he'll never really catch up to the Alchemist, but uh, that's not really something that can be in his sights at this point in the game. We're just trying to look for Ajit to get fat. He becomes this big damage dealer as well, and uh, Ben just going to try and create as much space as he can in these fights. He'll be struggling towards the Agonims for quite a while, I am sure. Yeah, both supports on the side of Bazaar really having a tough time getting their farm up. We see Phoenix got shoes and an empty wand. Rubik, I mean, he's got a little bit more to his name, lots of detection for him, but certainly not going to see Blink Dagger coming out in the next couple of moments unless he gets a, a high bounty kill. That bear is, why is it jumping? <laughs> it's a happy bear. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. It's just, it's leaping. <laughs> All right. Smoke Dyer's up from Bazaar. They're looking to get aggressive here. Realizing they can't let Alchemist just keep this doing Alchemist This is a tough things. 5v5. I mean, if they could pick off Alchemist at the start of the fight, 
Bazaar have a really good shot at the rest of this game. It looks like they're oh, going to isolate him from the rest of his herd. He, he Misclick with the stomp, run. though. Centaur, oh, unfortunate here. Now he's the one stuck. He does have his ulti. Will he be able to pop it off here? He gets it for his team, but he's going to hit the deck. The Phoenix Egg will be able to hatch, but just barely. Jabs almost gets that thing down. Now there is going to be a long range stun onto Afu. Manta popped as well. This Rubik, he get out alive, but unfortunately, Bazaar don't find the kill they're looking for. I mean, it's gonna be very difficult to find him without ulti, uh, with an Octarine Core for sure. That they were close, like he was uh, out of his form there, but they uh, weren't able to get the stun lock off in time. And uh, even then, I mean, this is still Alchemist with an Aegis, right? Like you're, you're probably hoping to pick off someone other than him. Uh, sadly, about two minutes to go, and uh, they might get another high ground push with this Aegis. When are we gonna it's start to see Lone Druid be? Like a, a real big boy. Because right now he's got himself a Hyperstone. He's got that Maelstrom, so he can push very quickly. Oh, but you look at his net worth, and he's not even keeping pace with the Gyro. Yeah, he just he can't be out on the map right now because of the next Assassin. Um, you can't be, like, totally out alone. Even if he has backup supports, that just means, like, what's happening in the other lanes. Uh, they might as well just be dodging you and pushing in with this Alchemist. So he's basically in fight mode. He, he knows that Faces are bringing it to them. He needs to be ready for that kind of stuff. Um, I can't rap too much because of Nyx once again, so... Yeah, he just needs Ben to do stuff. Uh, ben needs to be this frontliner who's just stunning people and allowing you to get your your hits off as much as possible. Uh, it's not an easy game for a lone druid. Like, he has all this damage. It's just someone to uh, be actually controlling faces heroes. No, no, just trying to keep this wave pushed back. It's hard with already half a lane of super creeps coming at you. There's a lot of pressure on this Tinker right now. He's got to be the one to split up, even when it's it's dangerous, because if Bazaar just kind of roll over and let their lanes get pushed in, it's going to be very tricky for them to recover. Yes, Jab's walking around. He's not even, like, popping his mantle. He's not even, like, farming around with it on the map right now. Oh, look at that TP. Gonna be Come on with the stun. Oh. <laughs> hey, boy. Jab's got it this time. <laughs> Nice. Tier 2 tower taken out. That is the last tier 2 tower on the dire side, so... Radiant, they've got to set their sights to high ground. Clearly they had no trouble cracking mid, but... It could be a little bit more difficult. The level's starting to roll in for both teams. Let's look, look at level breakdown. Alk, no surprise, going to be the top of the charts. Level 21, and he's going to pick himself up. The 300 health instead of the attack speed. How do you feel about that? Oh, I mean, that's fine. And this early in the game, that much health, that's so insurmountable. Like... Just the capital K. Compare how much more benefit you're going to get out of that uh, versus this lineup, like just sieging high ground, a lot of this magic damage being pumped out uh, from the rockets or even just the pure damage from the lasers. It's totally fine. I think that is uh, certainly the right call. Plus, whenever you have a higher HP pool, it just benefits your regen so much more. It's like so much more time for that to come into play uh, as you're being gone on during a fight. Top tower is under attack. Got a couple level 19s in the board. Gyrocopter, as well as our lone druid, looking to pick up their next level of the talent tree. Gyrocopters isn't going to be you know, super game changing, but spirit bear armor could be pretty neat. And also the, the respawn time. It's never an option you want to go with. It's always plan B. Do you think it's worthwhile here? As Bazaar just really need to get everybody back in the fight as soon as possible. Uh, sorry, which one specifically are you looking at for the uh... Uh, lone druid level 20? Oh god, always. Yes. I'll always respawn time. Really? Yes. No, 100%. Oh, always. Okay. Alright. Phoenix is going to be bullied here. Look at Ben just watching it. Oh, do they have vision here? That's the problem. They do. Centaur Warner's got the dust. There's a TP out. They got the stomp. Double edge to apply the damage. And there we go. Ben finally able to keep himself rolling. Putting himself back up there. Good, it's a grab for them. Um, any way to get Ben more farmed is just uh, gonna help Lone Druid out by proxy. Just uh, getting him into the Agnum Scepter, allowing him to survive longer these engagements. He finds a, uh, oh geez, Discord. That, that Discord's really letting us down. <laughs> it's got some issues, it seems, today. <laughs> well, hopefully everything gets sorted out quickly. Let's take a look at the net worth chart. Of course, a lot of this being amplified by the Alchemist being so far ahead, he's holding on to most of the net worth for his team. 
but uh, it is it is still becoming an issue for Bazaar to actually go and they have to kill the alchemist like two or three times now uh, to get a, a foothold back in this game. I feel like alchemist has just completely run away. And, and we did see Team Bazaar look really strong in the earlier levels as they were rotating and as they were finding picks, but it's not the picks you need. And now, unfortunately, Lone Druid. Not, not so great there. XY is going to pick up the kill for that just because the magnetized damage. Uh, so Alchemist. There was so much damage, they didn't even go for the stampede <laughs> for the magnetized. I think that was like... one of those, like, yep, you were a little bit out of position. You didn't really have a ward there, and uh, you're dead. Radiance top tower. One of those like pause ones too. Or <laughs> he had time to think about it and it was just like, yeah, you gotta let this Well, happen. you lose track as to like how long you've been in this area and like where people were moving. Like he had this ward here. Like did he know where his spirit had gone up there before? And like he's like, oh, well he could be coming back here by now. I don't know. You lose that kind of stuff during a pause, but. I like this Alk Blade Mail. Not a super typical choice, but it's definitely gonna pay off, especially with, you know, the damage that Phoenix is gonna be putting out in an AoE. Uh, tinker. Yeah, especially the tanker, right? And again, it plays off that big HP pool thing too, right? It's just uh, a nice little synergy with his talents. Alchemist is starting to work on his first Aghanim Scepter. He'll have it in just a couple hundred more golds. Who gets the first one? Uh, I don't know if he... Hmm. It's hard to tell. I would say XY. It, it depends, because I feel like you're going to be sieging with the Alk, right? So I, I like the Earth Spirit one because he has a Blink Dagger too, so he can blink on you. But I'm sure there's an argument for nuts, uh, just not black. I don't think. I don't think the side gunner is gonna do enough here uh, when you're this far ahead. It's not really much point. Uh, if they're having trouble sieging though, I guess there's also Ice 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 possibly. Uh, I think because all right, we're we're going in, guys. Because the cooldown on the Warlock ulti, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for. X Y, that's that's my X -Y? choice. X Y, all right, yep. we'll see. Alchemist, he's uh, he's got enough for it now. Probably one. I changed my mind. It's actually ice ice ice. Okay. I think that's actually way better. <laughs> uh. Alk here, going for a run in. He's gonna stun himself in the trees. Nah nah, just gonna take the opportunity to hop out of there, or or not. And try to go clean up a little bit more, more creepage before he takes out. So, right now, this is very much bizarre playing reactionary. They don't want to get too far from their base, don't want to get too far from their tier threes, letting faceless, you know, shape up and make the next move. And it's really dangerous. It's kind of one of those you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't kind of scenarios where you want to get in there, you want to contest Roche, you want to take fights. But if you lose those fights, it's just detrimental. There's no coming back yeah. from that. They, uh, they played very well over the past, like, five, ten minutes or so, honestly. They got a couple picks. Um, they've lost, like, their Lone Druid set, which is unfortunate, but uh, this is one of those times where the game could have just been over by now. Uh, faces at the same time, playing a little bit patient. Like, Black has been doing a ton of neutral farming all over the jungle, hence why he's now surpassed the Tinker, despite him being relatively free across the map so far. Jabs goes for a little bit of a defensive stun there. <laughs> yes, and Dargan. You see Black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a goon. That's great. Oh, and Jabs could be in a, a tricky situation there. Rubik gonna be going in. Oh, no, Doesn't have an Aegis. About. This is the time to fight. They're bringing in the neutral centaur. Can he land this top of his life? And we'll see there as the real centaur is gonna be Ulton trying to book everyone out of there. The double edge finishes off the alchemist. That's huge. Now the egg gonna get focused down here. Will it get a chance to hatch? Doesn't look like it. Black getting some money from that. And everyone else should be able to TP out safely. Well, I mean, I'll die, but I won because I just got the Aghanim, so that's it's all right, guys. We saved it. Uh, I feel like you're sieging high ground. That's actually so sick. So, uh, and also defending Roche, but uh, yeah, they did it. They killed the Alk. We got there. That's bizarre gaming. That's huge. How much was he worth there? That was almost 800 gold going to the Centaur. Maybe not the hero you need to have all that gold, but now he's got a blink, he's got an axe, so a little bit more sustainable, a little bit more yeah. able to initiate. He's like, man, I could have used this like 10 minutes ago when I've been trying to build this game magnets this whole time. Finally had it, but helps him win the fight. Had definitely humongous against all this AoE damage. Uh, like, this is kind of funnily enough, didn't even get the best chance to use all these crazy wombo combos. So, like, with this whole gyrocopter and everything like that, it was more of just like a out gaming that, that one invis rune. <laughs> You won that fight and you marched down mid, but uh, now that we've reached that later stage in the game, 
when uh, all the it, like it's easier now for Warlock to get things off because everyone's so tanky and beefy, and he's got his little mechanism so he can generally get into the fight and, and get his fatal bonds there, with the help of his uh, allies being uh, more maneuverable and whatnot. But now they have the stampede, so trying to negate the wombo combo by 60%. And uh, the real <laughs> like question is, can they size. actually get this Roche? Yeah, he's just huddling, making sure that no one from Bazaar is going to poke their head in. Uh, I mean, while this is going down, it seems like a pretty safe rush. Can we talk about this Tinker's item build? He went for the full Dagon and then picks up a Glimmer Cape. It's yeah, I think it's because of the mix, just like catching him out and stuff. So like, this means that if I say he doesn't have detection, he can't get on top of him during all these like side ganks and plays when he's doing this stuff. It's a weird choice for sure, but it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, why Glimmer? Is it just because it's less expensive than something like a Shadow Blade? I feel like... You yeah, know, and if Tinker's got the money, so maybe like a silver edge. If you're going to go big, you know, just do it. Just go for it. <laughs> silver yeah, edge Tinker, new meta. More like, uh, you'll get more value out of a Glimmer than you would a silver edge or something anyway, right? Yeah. The resistance, but it, it, it is still like super unique. I mean, this is, I don't think I've ever seen a Tinker Glimmer before. It's not like this is standard stuff against Nyx or something. You know but he just does this every single time. Tinker likes to right click. All right. It's kind of cool because he, like, it protects you against Tinker Wards in a sense, I guess, but only if they're, like, not looking, so not really. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to think about this one. Because, like, it's I still mean, a Nyx stun, right? So, like, even if you try and do this, like, blink into the trees and go invis, like, it's still a ground-targeted stun, so it doesn't matter if you're invis. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if it's going to pay off. I mean, it has been useful so far. I just would it have been more useful to just start building up something bigger. Looks like he's trying to go in for that uh, bloodstone. Maybe eventually finding a sheep stick for himself as well. And he's, he's got the big boy Dagon. He can do a fair amount of damage. He can pretty much pop uh, the earth spirit. Nyx Assassin's going to take a beating from it as well. But it looks like one of those tinkers in Overthrow. It, like just gets the chest and suddenly you have a glimmer cape. That kind of thing. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty like, much. Just ended I've up with this glimmer, glimmer cape. <laughs> like found it on the ground somewhere or something. I don't know. Um, the Bloodstone's an interesting choice. Uh, looks like he just wants to lay down like a billion things of marches in the base when they come to push, as well as having the faster respawn. But it means he won't have Agonims, which is very good against Alk and all his illusions. Here we go, high ground coming in. Looks like Jabs really wants to make quick work of this tower. Dire, he's gonna be able to defend this. Nana, he's just gonna be sitting back. He's got machines he can spray out to try to zone everyone back, but... Nyx, oh god, the Centaur. <laughs> Poor buddy. I think we'll, um... We'll probably see Jabs go for a Manta this time and then put back in his Blade Mail. I think it's so good against the Tinker that once you have the Illusions out, it, it might make more sense for him, but... We'll see what the next wave he decides to do. Oh, I guess if you don't have your Manta, though, he has to wait for the laser. It's really irritating. Yep, he's gonna be going in. That's the Manta we're talking about, but nice little hoof stomp. He's healing up a fair amount from his Octarine, but he's still getting low. The Age is gonna be popped. There's golems coming out on top of the call down. It's real messy for the Dire right now. They cannot be near their tier threes. Everyone huddling back so far. All of Bazaar is still alive. Alkin has stunned himself in the trees. The bear going to be scouting that out. Hope Stump comes in from Ben. There's going to be everyone sitting stunned up, taking a pause in the middle of the fight. As now Jax moves here back now, forward with that Shiva's guard lifted up again from the Rubik. They're going to be able to steal some spells. Gonna be enough Phoenix Egg setting the pace. It's gonna be a nice stun if they can find it, and they are able to do so. Yules from the Nyx gonna be dodging out what they can. The Earth Spirit does fall. Jabs, though, is still whittling away these racks. He's going in for the full set. Right now, Bazaar just don't have the resources to stop him. Uh, I, I just chilling here the entire time. Throwing out stuns, throwing out mana burns. Yeah, no. What a hero. He tried. He tried so hard, but unfortunately, this is going to be two full sets of racks now, able to finish what they started a couple minutes ago. Two lanes of super creeps. Only one lane of racks keeping them from Megas now. That was a Dagon level 5 onto Jabs, and he's barely feeling it. What do you do it's against his Alk right now? Uh, I mean, Alk, right? He's a hero. It's not really much you can do, honestly. Um, you just hope that you don't lose that second set of racks. And uh, Agnum's delivered to Jabs, and oh, well, Warlock leaves. It's like, bruh, did you did you not want this? I mean, that that was a, Warlock's that was got places to be, dude. He's a busy boy. Just follow him everywhere. Just be like, no, come on, dude, pick me. I'm your man. Look, look, look at <laughs> what. 
<laughs> you see Jazz's quick buy? Yeah, you get them eggs. I told you, everyone got... benefits from it. We talked about that in draft. Thanks I know, list. it's just great that he has two set up in a row. <laughs> Pretty good. Dude, why buy one axe when you can have three in your backpack? That's what those three slots are for. Needs one for himself, too. Oh. Dota 2. Uh, they certainly had the potential to take that fight, I think, from Bazaar. Just the timing has to be so perfect. Like, you, you need that uh, Centaur Stampede at the perfect time. Try and counter initiate the Wombo combo. And uh, Ice 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 makes these engagements so difficult. The non-stop carapaces, and, and then of course the fact that he's in burrow form, so he's uh, invisible, you need like those ground targets, you need detection, and he's just throwing out impales. Finds his spot and camps in it. XY had a nice save too on the alpha, where they had that one chance to maybe target him to the trees early on, and he, uh, he blink and kicked him out of the base. It was pretty good. Did we hand this thing off yet? Oh, yeah, I gave it to XY. Okay. Glorious Earth Spirit. Ready for the Blink Stone saves or possibly ganks. If they get Ajit, or even Ben would be a sick one to st um, snag with the stone for him. But they have a sentry in the base trying to make sure there won't be vision inside. Uh, so XY can't make that snipe. But now he's got the extra mobility of the Force Staff. Gotta watch out. Suddenly you're just stone formed. Still no side gunner for Black right now. Feeling a little bit of s sadness. Not able to just randomly drop more damage into the fight, but... We'll see. Alchemist again. He's got him queued up. He's working on it. Yeah, black, black is definitely the bottom of I'd rather have the HP on Jabs than the side gunner on Black. I think you're wrong. <laughs> um, maybe I'm being a little bit nurse or uh, facetious, but I, I actually do think it's. No, it probably is better, honestly. Like, let's be frank. Like, the HP on this guy, come on. It's completely side gunner. Fine. No. So it's fine. Okay. He, the right choices have been made. The Warlock without an Ag synth, though, is a little bit curious. I mean, yeah, I think Earth Spirit's better anyway. One one spell every 165 seconds versus Earth Spirit God. It's like, but it's two spells. You get double the golems, double the fun. <laughs> when we look at it, I suppose. <laughs> double the golems, double the fun. Makes sense. Uh, math adds up. Thank you. I uh, I went to public school in NA, so I'm really glad I was able to pass that math course. Don't uh, don't just lump it as NA. Please say US. Sorry, not, not Canadian NA, public you. schools are, are highly yeah, advanced. Now here we go. You. There's going to be an initiation here. The Alchemist get dropping low, but the call down on top of the Warlock Golems. Oh my. Bazaar are just melting down. We're dropping frames because there's just too much blood. Magnetized doing some work, but under the shrine, it seems like a couple heroes in Bazaar are able to make it out just fine. There's going to be buybacks coming forward. And Bazaar, they are able to hold this back. Golems expended, call down expended. Can they hold this? That's why. Not finding his angle. Didn't throw the stone down. Didn't He's like just it. Just tumbling around. Now the tower will be chipped down. You got X Nova thinking about going in for an egg, but you gotta keep everyone distracted. If you just egg, they're just going to focus you down, and we'll see that happening right there as Centaur gets stunned as he's looking for a stomp of his own. The Nick's going to yule himself off to dodge any stuns, and the GG comes out. Faceless taking two games in a row, making it look easy. The Alchemist just got way too much space to himself and started rolling all over this game, so... Bizarre. They got another chance to redeem this, but it's getting tougher and tougher. Yeah, it really did just feel like a 1v1. It's like... Tinker Alk and one Tinker of us Alk is going to perform in a fight. Yeah, and uh, Al Alk had that victory. Kind of brutal that it all cut. Honestly, that whole game kind of hinges on that invis room, but then the subsequent buyback was brutal. Uh, that that did not help the case for Bizarre. So from there, easy snowball, easy game. Alchemist you know, coming through once again. Try... I've seen him do that like in every tournament. You made me believe in this Phoenix. You made me think it was a brilliant idea, but unfortunately, hey, he get off like every egg. I mean, he ends and they won six, like though. every fight for the first 20 minutes. That is true, but that's all the Alchemist was doing Alk things. So potentially going to see uh, some love slash hate for Alk in this next draft. We're going to move on to game number three of the Mr. Cat Grand Finals in just a couple of minutes. So sit tight. We're going to pop on some tunes and get hyped. <laughs> 